So I just got an email from Elementor letting me know that there's a 3.5 beta version available for testing right now. So I've gone ahead, downloaded and installed that and this is the email that I've got from them. So I'm gonna give you my opinions like I've done many times before. We'll take a look at the different features. I'll let you know what I think of them, but I would love to get your feedback in the comment section below because this is a two-way conversation. So please do let me know what you think of these new features. So this is the email that I've just received from Elementor and as you can see, we've got a selection of seven new features or updates. So you've got CSS transform, text stroke, word spacing control, mark widgets as favorites, multi-select, drag and uh, drag from the desktop and new experiments UI. Some of these I think are really, really useful. And this is in the free version of Elementor. So this isn't pro, this is gonna be available to everybody once it releases. So things like the word spacing control, anything that gives us more control over typography is a good thing. The mark widgets as favorite, this is something that I've been looking for for quite some time because I love the way in which it's been done inside the Bricks Builder. When you've got lots and lots of different widgets, especially when you've got third-party add-ons installed, it gets very unwieldy very, very quickly. So having something that allows you to put these, pin these to the top of your panel, your sort of like widget panel, is definitely a good thing. We've got drag and drop from the desktop. Nice feature. I can't say that it's a game changer, but I do think it's something that for a lot of users, this could be really quite nice. And there's a new experiments UI. So we're gonna start off with the boring one, first of all, the new experiments UI. So let's just hop over into the dashboard. And as you can see, this is the experiment section inside Elementor. Now this is the dev version of Elementor. So this is pretty much the same as what you'd see if you were using a beta version. And as always, please only test beta versions out on a non-critical site. Do not do this on a live site. So what exactly do we have? Just basically they've cleared things up so you can see what status an experiment is and whether you want to enable it and how far along in the development cycle it actually is. So you can see we've got ongoing experiments, we've got status of beta and alpha or beta and alpha for my American friends. And if we take a look underneath, we've now got stable features. So these are features that are still experimental, but they're not final release versions. So you can enable or disable these if you want to, but they are, to all intents and purposes, they should be stable and solid and available to use on a live production site. Anything like you can see above inside the ongoing experiments, I would generally recommend not to enable these on a live site not worth the potential problems you may find by using these. So that's the first one. Kind of a little bit boring, but you know, nice to see they've organized it a little bit better. If we now hop over into the pages, I'll create a new page and this is where we can take a look at some of these new features. So we're just gonna call this Elementor Beta or Beta Test and we'll just publish this page. It's only on a test site anyway, and we'll go ahead and edit this with Elementor. So once this now loads in, let's take a look first of all at the favorites thing, because I think this is something that a lot of people will find useful. You can see at the top of the left-hand panel now where our widgets are, we've got a new section called favorites. And all we need to do to add any of these current widgets to a favorite is to simply right click and choose add to favorites. And you see that now adds it to the top of the stack and becomes a favorite. What will be quite nice is an option to allow you to pin this as you scroll. So as we scroll up, that could stay at the top, you know, maybe only for a sort of certain length of time and then it'll kind of slide off. Just so if we're kind of scrolling through and we think, oh, actually I need something else. I still don't need to go right the way back to the top. But this is a good starting point. I think it could be refined a little bit, but it's great to see this is included. And if we want to remove anything from the favorites, we simply right click and we choose remove from favorites. Really quick and easy, but a great time saver when you use a lot of the same kinds of widgets, which most of us do building websites. Again, it would be nice to see the ability to create starter setups that you could export that include a lot of your normal features. For example, what you pin to the top of your favorites in this panel. So we could export this and import this in as a starting point on all of our projects. You know, lots of little things you could do to take this to the next level, but this is a good starting point. So kudos for doing that. Okay, so next on our list is to take a look at some of the other options we've got. So first of all, let's go ahead and drag a heading into our page. Let's get rid of this annoying heading section at the top, the title of the page, to disable that. Let's make a bit of space so you can see what I'm doing. So let's just put some margin top and bottom. Okay, so one of the new features we now have is under styles and we've got a new option called text stroke. 
And as its name would suggest, it allows us to create strokes around our text. So if you come from like an Illustrator background or Photoshop or any of these kinds of tools, you're going to be used to dealing with creating strokes around various different things. So if we click and open this up, you can see we can choose a stroke color, we can choose our custom colors, or we can create something totally unique for this example. Let's just choose this dark color. Now what we need to do is go ahead and configure it. So we'll go back to our text stroke and we'll adjust this. And you can see that now puts a black stroke around our text. And if I want to, I could go to my text and I could just simply reduce the opacity on the background color. And we now have a text effect where we've just got an outline text. You know, one of those things that's not exactly groundbreaking, not that important, but a nice to have nonetheless. And if we open this up, you can see we can easily expand the size of this and do all our normal things. So that's how easy it is to apply this stroke around your text. Now we're not limited to this just being around text, I understand. If we go over and take a look at the learn more option inside here, and we can take a look over on GitHub, which tells us how all these different features work. If we scroll down to where we've got the styling capabilities, we'll scroll down till we see text stroke, and you can see this feature is also supporting the icon box, the tabs widget, the accordion widget, and text path widget. So you can use the same set of controls on any of those additional widgets. I'm not gonna go over them because I think you can see how this works. You just need to know we can work on these additional widgets as well. Text on a path being, again, something, if you come from an illustrator or a vector kind of background, you're probably gonna be used to working with those types of things. Okay, so that's that side of things. And okay, quite nice. Next up, we've got word spacing underneath our typography settings. Now, word spacing, again, this is one of those things that if you want more refinement over your typography on your website, this can be very useful. And as its name would suggest, it allows us to adjust the spacing on a word by word basis in the same way that letter spacing does each letter. We could now use these in combination with each other adjust the letter spacing, adjust the actual word spacing, and it gives us a little bit more refined control over the typography on any website. So again, I do like this, and I'm fairly sure if we go to anything that uses the text options and into styling, we should have inside there under our typography, we've got our word spacing option. So this isn't limited to titles. You can use this pretty much anywhere, I believe, that uses a text-based element. So pretty cool kind of useful, and I'm not gonna say there's anything wrong with that. This is the free version of Elementor, so we do need to give it a little bit more leeway than the pro version because it's free. Okay, so that's some of the typography options, but we can also go ahead now, we've got some more options to do with animation. If we hop over into the advanced section, come into transform, you can see that we've got some options inside here. Okay, so some of the new features that we have when it comes to the animation effects, and again, we've jumped back over to the GitHub section. You can see we've got some CSS transformations available. Rotate 2D and 3D rotation, pivot point, scale, skew, offset, and flip. For me, this feels like it's trying to compete with some of the animation effects that you get with a tool like Webflow. If you like animation effects, then this could be useful for you. For me, I find this still is a little bit clunky, and let me just demonstrate what I mean. If we take a look at the transform, we've got normal, we've got hover, and then we've got all the different options we can use inside there, flip, those kinds of things. And obviously the hover allows us to create this animation effect on hover, or your mouse over it. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's do something like we'll do this rotate, and we'll say we'll go 90 degrees, we're not gonna worry about 3D at the moment. I'll come back and show you that in a second. So now when we come over this, you can see it will rotate 90 degrees on the screen. But you can't help but notice that if I don't go to the pivot point, which in this example is dead in the center, it kind of goes a bit funky. It goes crazy animation wobbling around. And this is the same if we preview the changes, we get the same effect on there as well. So it's not just being inside the editor. Okay, so if I come over this and I go to the edge, you can see we get this kind of crazy flashing animation. If I go to the middle, it'll animate correctly. So I'm really not a big fan of how that works right now. A couple of other options inside here, you can control the duration of this, so we can adjust this and make it slower. So you can see that now pivots a lot slower. And we've also got the ability to adjust the anchor point. Now the anchor point is basically the pivot point, where it's going to pivot from. At the moment, this is set to the center. So you can see when I go to the center of this, it pivots on the central point. If we set this to be on the X and Y axis, for example, on left, 
you can see now if I go to the left, it pivots on the left hand point. So it's kind of pinned in the top left hand corner. And if we do bottom and right, you can see that pivots to the bottom right. So again, it's one of those things that I'm sure people will come up with some really cool ways of using this, but it really feels quite clunky at the moment. You can obviously use these without the animation, so let's just reset that animation from there. And if you wanted to flip your text, you can see we can flip it so we can set our axis points on there. And again, you can set your axis points based upon the device you're viewing it on. So again, this is quite nice to see that we have full control over all the different responsive elements for this. And if we wanted to, we can flip it both horizontally and vertically. So, you know, I'm sure there's some quite nice uses for this. I do like the thing that you could do, for example, you could rotate this and you could set this to be like 90 degrees or 180 degrees or something. Let's just set this to 90. And you can see we can now do that and we can position this in a kind of funky fashion if we wanted to. And we do have 3D rotate. So we've got rotate on the X axis. You can see that gives us quite a funky effect. So if you want to create a Star Wars effect, you could do that. Rotate on the Y. We can rotate on that and we can adjust the perspective as well. I'm not a big fan of animation effects. I think they slow down a website. They can make it look a bit gimmicky, but in the right use cases with some good design principles being used, I'm sure you can get some really good things out of this. But that's the animation side of things. Not, not really bothered about this personally. So another feature that's been added is the ability to multi-select various different widgets on your page. And then you can apply certain actions to them. We could do with a good list of all those actions, but let me just quickly show you. So if I select this first section and we'll select that, now if I hold the command or the control key down on the keyboard and start adding extra selections, you can see we've now got three different widgets selected. And we've also got their column sections as well, or their, their sections, which gives us five things in total. So now with all of those selected, I can go ahead and do some different actions. In this example, let's try deleting them. So if I come over to one of the selected elements, and right click, you can see it now says delete three items because I've got three different things selected. So let's hit that, and there we go. That's deleted those, left the, the sections in place, but deleted the columns and the contents of those columns. Could be quite useful, and I believe you can also do the same thing through using the navigator. I believe we can select everything inside here by using that control or command option. Yes, we can. So you can see now we can select all of those inside there, which is a little easier than doing it directly on the page, I will admit. And then we can go ahead, right click and say delete five items. And that's now deleted everything, including those sections. Let's just undo that so we bring them back. So a nice little time saver if you need to delete multiple different items. I know there's been many cases where I wanted to do exactly that. So this is good. More sort of making it easier for the designer to get more effective and more efficient in the design work. So I do, do like these kind of productivity enhancement options. The animation things, not so much so. Okay, so the final thing we're gonna take a look at now is how we can use the drag direct from your computer into the actual Elementor editor itself. Again, this is one of those things that I think is quite nice, good way of enhancing the user experience and make it a little bit more desktop-like. So let's just delete this image. So we've got a nice empty column in the left-hand side. Let's grab an image from my desktop. This one will do. We'll drag that over, drop it inside there, and you can see that now tells me it's uploading, places a preview directly inside there. That's now been uploaded, and I can start to work with it. So that's pretty cool that we can do stuff like that. So that's the updates to Elementor Beta or Beta 3.5, the free version of Elementor. What are your thoughts on these? For me, I like the UI enhancements. I think some really nice features inside there. I like the drag and drop from your desktop. I like the ability to very quickly and easily multi-select, delete items from there, add into the favorites, those kinds of things. I'm not so bothered about the things like the animation effects. They're not something that I would ever really use other than some really simple options. The outline text is quite useful, but not something that I think is overly important. But this is the free version, so adding things like this into the free version I think is perfectly fine. But let me know your comments in the comment section below because I'd love to get your feedback on this update. As always, all the applicable links are in the description below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats, and until next time, take care.